Hi, I'm Lindsay. I'm one of the compositors here at Powerhouse, and for this pro tip, we're going to talk about camera shake techniques and After Effects to help out your animation project. So let's get started. Okay, so say you have an animation and you feel like it needs a little bit more drama or exaggeration to really sell it. As an example, I worked up this little ditty. I feel like adding a little camera shake when the logo lands on the words powerhouse animation could help add to the drama and impact of the animation. So what is camera shake? Camera shake is an old school filmmaking technique used to create a little more action in a scene without having to move or manipulate the set. The filmmakers would physically shake the camera to disrupt the viewing experience and in turn, hopefully, making the person watching feel a little bit more in the action. This technique works the same way in After Effects and I'm going to show you several different ways you can add camera shake to your scene and you can decide which one works best for you depending on your needs. So the first thing I need to do is make sure all my layers are set to 3D and then add a camera into my scene. I like to work with a simple one node camera as often as I can get away with, so that's what I'm gonna work with here. I will say that a two node camera tends to look a little more realistic when you're working with 3D layers and parallax, but since we're not working with any parallax in this example, I can get away with a one node camera. One technique for adding camera shake into your scene is to manually animate your camera. So we'll just go in here to the point of impact, use shortcut C to toggle through my camera tools, and I'll move the camera around a little bit manually. Since I want to recreate the effect of a really heavy object falling and affecting the surrounding area, I'll start with a large movement, and over the course of, say, 12 frames, I'll have it trickle down into smaller movements. This technique is useful if you only really need the effect to happen for a few keyframes, but you want complete control over your camera movement. I think this is working okay-ish, but I have some other techniques that might work better. So I'm going to start over with a new camera. Again, I can get away with working with a one-node camera, so that's what I'm going to use. This technique is similar to the one above, but it uses a tool called the Wiggler to do some of the work for you. If you don't see the Wiggle panel, you can access it by going up to Window, Wiggler. The Wiggler works by creating random values for keyframes in between two points, or keyframes, that you decide. So in this case, I want to create one keyframe at my impact point and another one where I want the wiggling or camera shake to stop. Then I highlight both of those points and go over to my Wiggler window, and I'm going to change my noise type to jagged. The two main things you're concerned about in this window are the frequency and the magnitude. The frequency number represents how many times per second the wiggle will occur, and the magnitude is the degree or amount of movement that will take place. So I'm going to try 12 and 50 for this and then hit apply. So you can see this technique generates some keyframes for me pretty quickly. The disadvantage of this technique is that I don't have any flexibility with my fall off like we had before but I can go in there and manually adjust my position if I want to. One thing that you'll see with this technique is that you won't always get keyframes that sit directly onto evenly spaced frames. You can see here that this keyframe sits right between these two frames. So if I want to change any of these keys, I'll have to go in here manually and adjust the numerical value, or I can move them around and use my camera tools. So that's all good, but let me show you my favorite technique for a situation like this. This is a technique that we use most often here at Powerhouse. I'm going to go ahead and get a fresh new camera in here, and in this case, I want to use a two-node camera. I'm going to start by adding in a null object and renaming it something that I can remember. Then I'm going to go over to my effects window and find an expression controller called slider control. I need to add two of them to my null object. I'm going to rename each of these slider controls so I know what each of them does. I'm going to open up all my layers so I can see all my options here. We're going to be writing a really simple form of code to tie our camera to the null object. First, I'm going to alt-click on my position of interest, which will activate my expression controls. In this space to the right, I'm going to write wiggle open parentheses. Then I'm going to grab this little curly hue thing here, which is called the pick whip, and drag it up to the word slider under the frequency on my null layer. Then back and add a comma to my expression. Then back to the pick whip, 
but this time we're going to drag it up to the word slider under the magnitude control under my null layer. Then I'm going to close my expression by adding a close parenthesis on my expression line. So now I have a camera tied to a null layer that is controlling my camera shake. So I can go into my null layer and keyframe on the magnitude slider however I see fit. I'm going to try 12 and 50 and then have it slide out to zero over the course of the animation. Now is a good time to point out that for various reasons using this method, you can't actually have a linear tween in between your frequency keyframes. For our purposes, it's good to think about these two keyframes as held keyframes or stepped keyframes versus the linear keyframe that they might look like. This is, of course, an oversimplification. If you want to know more about this issue and how you can work around it, Dan Eberts over at motionscript.com wrote a great article about this issue and how you can solve it. If you're interested in that sort of thing, I'll give you a link to that article in the description. Motionscript.com is a great resource for anyone who wants to learn more about coding and expressions in After Effects. Anyway, moving on, the nice thing about this is I have fewer keyframes that I have to worry about keeping evenly spaced, and I can adjust the frequency or the magnitude pretty easily. My favorite aspect of this technique is it separates out the shake from the position of the camera. So I'm free to easily add in some position keyframes to my animation without having to worry about if I'm messing up my camera shake. This technique takes a little more work on the front end, but it's my favorite one to use because it's the most flexible in the most situations. Thanks for watching, hope it was helpful. Be sure to check out more pro tips at www.powerhouseanimation.com.